Thank you for uh, choosing us over the craps table. We guarantee you will not lose any money in this session, so you made a good choice by coming to the session. Um, good morning, my name is Steve Wynn. I'm Yammer Product Evangelist with the uh, Yammer Product and Engineering Team. And I'm Jason Mayans. I'm Group Product Manager for the Yammer Team. Uh, first time Yammer speaker, long time Microsoft employee. Uh, and so we're really excited here to tell you today about what's new and what's coming next with Yammer. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, the strategy for Yammer, where we are today, but then we're going to spend most of this session uh, deeper in demos, showing what we have shipped recently, what we are shipping soon in Yammer, and then talking a bit about our future and where we're going from here. So to get started, Yammer is a, a product that in its, in its evolution has gone through a number of different uh, missions, if you will. And I feel like in the last couple of years, we have gotten really crisp about what the purpose of Yammer is within the broader Office 365 suite. Yammer's purpose is to connect leaders and their employees together in order to build organizational alignment, build culture, build community, and preserve knowledge across an organization. And so when we think about where we invest in Yammer, Yammer, we really think about these three key pillars, leadership engagement, corporate communications, and communities and knowledge. So for leadership uh, engagement, you know, the leaders of your organization want to be able to get their message out to the employee base, but it's not only that. They also want to understand the sentiment of employees, what's on their mind. And of course, employees want to understand what's on the minds of their leaders. And this is really a tight connection that builds that organizational alignment and culture. And one of the things that we found is that in organizations where the leaders engage deeply in Yammer, they build a much greater sense of employee engagement, number one. And number two, uh, they actually have much greater Yammer usage within their organization. Um, the second pillar um, that we are thinking about as a team is really corporate communications. So within the Office 365 suite, of course, we're here at the SharePoint conference. Uh, we're talking about using SharePoint as a way to communicate with employees. SharePoint has amazing features for SharePoint news that let you really customize and target kind of these richly created news sites. Uh, and that's great. What you can do with Yammer is really use Yammer as a tool to amplify those communications that you have on SharePoint and amplify those communications within your organization and enable employees to have discussions around those. Um, so we really think of, of Yammer as a tool for being able to, to broaden uh, and discuss uh, corporate communications. And this is one of the things that we really learned as we dug into leadership engagement. As we talked to uh, organizational leaders, uh, we talked to the corporate communications folks that supported them. And they said, hey, not only do we want Yammer to represent what our leader has to say directly, uh, but we also want to be able to get out the broader organizational message and support that through Yammer. The third pillar uh, that we invest in when we think about Yammer is really communities and knowledge. So how do we, within an organization, break down silos uh, across organizational boundaries, across geographies, in order to connect um, people who have the same interests, who have the same area of practice, who perhaps have the same background or identity. How do we connect them in, in order to build community and then enable those communities to capture knowledge in a very easy way uh, that could be leveraged by the organization forever? Um, so those are really the three key pillars we think about uh, uh, for, for Yammer's mission. Now all of that we build on top of two things. First, Yammer is an integrated part of the Office 365 suite. 
Now in Yammer's history, of course, it was founded as a startup, acquired into Microsoft, and over time has become more and more and more part of the suite. And you may have noticed this morning how many times Yammer was actually mentioned uh, throughout the keynote. Uh, and what we really look to do is both enhance the social capabilities that are in the suite, uh, the capabilities that are in Teams, the capabilities that are in SharePoint, as well as leverage, uh, you know, the capabilities that are there today. Things like um, the compliance capabilities or common experiences that you see across the suite. Um, lastly, we think one of the key advantages of Yammer over other alternatives is that Yammer is built on the security and trust that Microsoft provides. Um, so this overall is really the mission of, of Yammer. So what's, what's Yammer as a experience really great at? Yammer's superpower is really about enabling uh, part large-scale participatory conversations. Uh, and, and we do that in a few key ways. First of all, Yammer is open and inclusive by default. So when you think about using Yammer, groups by default are public. Anybody can go in and participate. Anybody can join and communicate. We have a discovery feed that helps you find new things in groups that you might be a, not be a member of. So it's really open and inclusive. Second, Yammer lets you participate on your own terms. So when you think about an experience in email or an experience in Teams, uh, with chat. Uh, those are communication experiences where uh, you are expected to react quickly, you're expected to respond quickly, it adds something to your, to your, to your queue to do right now. That's not what Yammer's about. Yammer's about gaining knowledge, building knowledge, connecting with your organization, but on your own terms and when you're able to take the time to, act, to, to, to go do that. Um, third, uh, Yammer is really built to capture knowledge for the long term. So we have you know, the idea of Yammer groups, uh, threads to organize conversations. We have the ability, of course, to use uh, tags as well to, to mark and organize conversations that happen across groups. Um, and we think that these three superpowers of Yammer really create some key benefits. Uh, those benefits being, uh, one, organizational transparency. So you can really find out what's going on uh, across the organization, across silos and up and down uh, the organizational chain. Uh, two, uh, really provides the benefit of serendipitous discovery. So the ability to uh, just stumble upon things and find out about what's going on in your organization. And third, provides the benefit of uh, plural expression the ability for large groups of people to come together and express their needs, provide feedback, uh, and, and, and build that knowledge. So, uh, you know, I wanna share a few numbers about where Yammer is today and how we're growing. Um, so last year, uh, the team really stepped back and spent quite a bit of time focusing on the infrastructure uh, of Yammer and how we build Yammer in order to architect for future growth. So at this time in our history, we actually have more engineers working on Yammer than we've ever had in the past. Uh, last year, we had a, a, a very deep effort to take the Yammer architecture uh, and move it on top of Azure services. Uh, and that is really allowing us to scale uh, Yammer uh, at lower cost than ever before. And I'm gonna talk a little bit later in the talk about some of the other uh, benefits, end user benefits that we're seeing out of that investment. So we'll get back to that. Um, but looking at these numbers, I uh, wanted to call out a few things. First of all, our overall Yammer active usage has doubled um, since March of 2017. Uh, you might have seen this at the lower, lower left in the, in the keynote uh, address this morning. Uh, but the reason we call this out is because uh, March of 2017 is actually when Microsoft uh, announced Teams. Uh, and of course, uh, we're not here to uh, compete with Teams. We're here really to work together with Teams 
uh, on different scenarios. And what we're seeing is that, uh, you know, at that time when we introduced Teams, we talked a, a lot about kind of the inner loop and outer loop, Teams as a place for your inner loop to work, and Yammer as a place for your outer loop across silos to work. Uh, I, I personally kind of like to think about it as Teams as being the place where I work on project work to get projects done, and Yammer being the place as where I build and connect with communities. Um, but what we're seeing is organizations are adopting that, understanding that, and actually rolling out together both Teams and Yammer for what each of the products is best at. Uh, another number I want to call out here is our user retention within Yammer is quite high. 79% uh, user retention for users who start engaging with Yammer. So if you do a Yammer rollout, um, particularly if you have your leadership engaged in that rollout, uh, you can see quite high retention uh, in Yammer. And then uh, just another last call out is that actually 85% of our Fortune, um, Fortune 500 companies uh, are actually using Yammer today. So uh, Ignite, the Ignite conference in, uh, last year it was in September, is typically where we make our largest announcements, uh, and the next one is, is coming up in November. Uh, but what I wanted to do was actually call out what we promised at that conference in, uh, in September, because we think it's, it's very important when we talk about our roadmap and the features that we're going to uh, deliver, uh, that, we, that we meet those promises and we go out and deliver on them. And so instead of draining this list, uh, what I'm going to have do have uh, happen here is Steve is actually going to walk through a set of demos to show our progress. So Steve. Thank you, Jason. So the first thing I'm going to start off with is the uh, second most requested user voice item uh, for on uh, Yammer's user voice. Any guesses what that was? Rich text formatting. So uh, we're happy to be delivering rich text formatting to you. Um, I'm going to just copy some text in here. Uh, we heard from a lot of you uh, a desire to want to be able to uh, provide uh, more emphasis within your post. Maybe you wanted the ability to separate content within, uh, within your post by using things like bullet points. So you'll see I have the ability now. I can uh, highlight culture talk. I can even use keyboard shortcuts like Control-B. Maybe I want to make Yammer italics. You can see that. You also see there's uh, bullet points already in there. I'll make this a bullet. Uh, if I highlight something, do Control-K, I can put a URL in. So rich text formatting in Yammer, I'll post that. And you can see uh, this is actually now rolled out to all networks. All of your networks should now have rich text formatting. Hopefully, uh, you've started to see that in your networks today. Um, the next thing, of course, since we are at uh, SharePoint conference, is uh, I'd like to sh share with you some work that we've been doing within SharePoint itself. As Jason mentioned, a key part of our strategy is really to incorporate Yammer into more places across the suite. Yammer has, in the past, perhaps been a destination that people have to go to. This, sometimes we've heard feedback from users that it's this extra place that they have to go. We want to try to minimize that. Of course, Yammer is going to continue to be a great place for people to go and engage in rich, dynamic conversations. But we also want to bring the goodness of Yammer to other places as well. And so one of the places that we've been doing that is with SharePoint. And so this is, a, this is the SharePoint team site. Uh, I was on the Leadership Connection Yammer group. And as uh, Jason mentioned, this is a great place for employees within your organization to have uh, meaningful, rich dialogue back and forth with executives within your organization, for executives to engage with those employees. So we'll kind of be using this leadership connection theme throughout this demonstration. So you might have a corresponding leadership connection team site. Uh, where you have uh, articles, uh, maybe you're posting news about what your executives are doing. Um, but here on the left-hand side, you see we've brought in that Yammer Conversations web parts from that Yammer group. So now you can have those rich conversations and that uh, you can have the, the stream videos embedded right on the page. You can actually like and reply. So I can like. So I don't have to actually leave the context of the page to actually engage in these conversations. The next thing that we've done is we want to make sure that files that you share in Yammer are safe and secure. Today, when you upload files into Yammer, they're stored in a kind of separate Yammer file repository. And in general, we want to kind of get out of the business of Yammer having to do certain things uniquely. There's no reason for us, for Yammer, to store files when we know there's a much better place within the suite to be able to do that. 
So I'm going to upload a file here. So I have a presentation I've stored. So I have a PowerPoint document. So I'm going to say, um, please check out the and then post it. And so what you'll see if I go to the files tab here is we have this culture document. And then so if you're familiar with the Yammer files view, you'll also notice that we have a filter here. So any files then that get uploaded to SharePoint, you can actually filter them. So I can see just the Yammer files. In this case, I don't have any uh, files that have been stored in Yammer, but I can also see just the files that have been uploaded to SharePoint. And then if I switch over to the document library, you can see now that that file has, is also stored in that SharePoint document library. So again, as IT professionals, you want all the goodness and all the value that, that, that SharePoint brings to you from a, file, from a file perspective. So you get e-discovery, you get NGO storage, you get uh, DLP, you get all that goodness now with all of your files. From an end user standpoint, you saw in the keynote today all the benefits around seeing recent files. So now this file now shows up in your recent files across your various uh, clients. This uh, also shows up in various search results across Office 365. So now we have the ability to not only store these files, but make them accessible from across the suite. So this will start rolling out in the next couple of months. I want to switch over and talk a little bit about Teams. As, as Jason mentioned, we think that there are a lot of core scenarios in which your employees within your organizations can use Yammer and Teams together. And we introduced this notion, as Jason mentioned, this notion of kind of inner loop and outer loop at Ignite probably about two years ago or so. And I think it resonated with many of you. But we also got feedback from many of you that it, because it resonates, you gave us feedback and said, well, help us navigate a little bit better between Yammer and Teams a little bit better. So we started to think, of, think about that, and we worked with the uh, Teams team. And so what we have here is a corporate communications team. Now, some of you might have um, a similar structure like this, where you have your corporate communications team working within Teams. They're doing their day-to-day -day work in Teams. They're collaborating on files about uh, news articles perhaps they're publishing. Maybe they're gathering information about an upcoming town hall. And that's what we're doing uh, here in this particular uh, uh, com corporate communications team. We have this sort of notion that we've been talking about within our, uh, within, within our Yammer product team around this notion that we call kind of the front door. What this corporate communications team also wants to be able to, to keep track of is all of, the, all of the conversations that are happening within that leadership connection group that I showed you previously. A lot of those conversations, a lot of those questions aren't really meant for the team, capital T, team, but they're really meant for the broader organization, right? And so what this corporate communications team wants to be able to do is be able to have a view into that Leadership Connection Yammer group right from within Teams. So we recently introduced the Yammer tab for Teams, which allows you to configure this tab to have a view into a particular Yammer group. It could be a view into a particular uh, topic area that you are interested in. It could be a, a specific user. In this case, we've scoped this particular tab to the Leadership Connection group. So now this corporate communications team can do, be doing all of their day-to-day -day work in their conversations channel or in various channels within their team, but then be able to flip over to this Yammer, uh, this Yammer tab that has a view into the leadership connection group in Yammer. So again, as I, as I mentioned, this, uh, this corporate communications team is doing some work around collecting feedback or collecting uh, topics for an upcoming town hall. And you can see as I scroll down here, I see a bunch of different conversations that are happening. And so maybe I see one here, um, this one about um, diversity and inclusion. And what we've done here within the, the Yammer tab is the ability now to share this conversation to the channel. So we might say, is this a conversation? Oops. So maybe this is something that we want to share in an upcoming uh, town hall event that we're doing. And so I can type a message in there share it, and when I go back to the conversations, what that does is that creates a little, uh, now, we have, now we can have a little back channel chat. So uh, maybe I'm not ready to have this chat in the broader leadership connection community, but as a smaller communication team, maybe we want to chat and say, is this something that we want to talk about in our next culture talk? Yes, no, maybe, thumbs up, thumbs down. And now we can have this conversation within our team. What do you think? Is this going to be something that you can use?
Great. And we're, we, we see a number of other scenarios that we think uh, will be useful to move between Yammer and Teams, and even between uh, from Yammer into Teams. Uh, we'll have much more to, uh, to talk about uh, when we come to Ignite, but rest assured, we think there are a lot of scenarios. Teams, uh, we're working very closely with the Teams product team on, uh, on a number of other integrations with Yammer as well. All right, so I'm gonna switch over. The Yammer tab is, uh, is available now, yes. All right. The other thing that we announced recently is um, live events in Yammer. And we talked with many of you um, about this desire for you to connect, with your, connect your leaders with their employees in much more engaging ways that go beyond a conversation. And a big part of that, uh, a, a, bit, a big part of that way to engage more richly is through using uh, video. And so we recently released the capability to do live events in Yammer. And I want to show you what the experience looks like on a mobile device. And we, we really believe that doing live videos, uh, especially with your executives, really brings a sense of authenticity. It brings a sense of connection and engagement that, you, that goes a, a bit beyond just the conversations themselves. So what you see here is a live studio produced event that is being broadcast through Yammer. And as Christina mentioned in the keynote, this is a collaboration that we worked on with both the stream team and also the teams team as well to bring this, uh, bring this to you. But as I scroll through, what you'll notice is I have access to all the various questions and the conversations. And what I love about this is that the video floats along with me. So I don't lose the context of the video, I don't lose context of the audio itself, and I can actually, again, participate in any of these conversations. The other thing that uh, you saw in the demo this morning is our new question and answer capability. And we're really excited about this question and answer capability. We've talked with a lot of you uh, about this, and it seems like it's something that's gonna be really useful. But we also think that it's gonna be useful in the live event scenario. So Satya, if you're not familiar, Satya runs a uh, monthly question and answer for Microsoft, for all Microsoft employees on a monthly basis. And in fact, the event is called Satya's Q&A. So it would be natural that we would also include a question and answer capability into the live event scenario itself. So I can do that. I'm going to click on, I'm going to create a post here. And I have the ability to ask a question. And I can say, uh, when is the new process? Coming, and then post. And what you, so what you'll see here is now I can participate in this conversation, I can ask questions, I can post comments, just as if I was on my desktop as well. Which, by the way, we'll switch back over to my desktop. Go back to that leadership connection group. Also, little subtle reminders on the left-hand side. You see those little uh, indicators, uh, the little pink indicators indicating that there are live broadcasts happening. I'm going to go to the culture talk here in my browser. And you'll see those same conversations, those same questioning, the, the same questions happening uh, on the page itself. The other thing that we're going to be adding as well is the ability for uh, participants, but also uh, more, perhaps more importantly, moderators of the event to see those specific questions that are being asked within the live event itself. So over here on the right, you see I have a filter. I can click on it and I can filter and see all the questions. So maybe I'm, I want to filter out and I don't want to see all the, all the uh, comments that are in the feed, but instead I want to see just the questions. But I can also filter and say, maybe I only want to see the unanswered questions. So in this case, uh, now I can see the unanswered questions in the feed. And those are the unanswered questions are the ones that do not have a best answer marked. So let me come back to that. So the best answer capability is one in which uh, we allow for two types of people to be able to, to mark the best answer within a feed. The person that asks the question can mark the best answer, or the administrator of the group has the ability to mark the best answer. So what you see when I do that is I can say mark best answer here. And this conversation can flow just like any normal conversation would. And then if there are multiple replies in the feed, that best answer then gets pinned to the top of the replies. So, so when I come back, if I come back later and I want to see what the best answer is to this meetings culture question, I don't have to sift through dozens and dozens of replies. I can see that best answer pinned to the top of the feed, move on with my day. 
What do you think? Best answer? Yes. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about uh, community sites kind of down the road, but it's, uh, we have future plans uh, for what we want to do. I'm going to switch over real quick here to the Ask HR group, which is, again, another scenario in which um, you know, we think that a question and answer can be uh, very valuable. A lot of times we've heard from our customers that uh, the community scenario, Jason talked about kind of our three main pillars, community being one of them. And we know that a lot of people come to these communities to ask questions. And so in this case, we have this uh, sort of ask HR community where people are coming to ask general questions about vacation policies or benefits plans and things like that. But the other thing that you might notice here is that HR bot. Uh, we, saw this, um, we saw this in the demo earlier that Christine shared with you, and we have documentation on how you can set up a very similar HR bot. You can set this up to be connected to a backend SharePoint list. It can be set up uh, connected to even a Word document or even Excel, uh, Excel spreadsheet. Lots of different ways you can set up this bot. We also have a session later on this week. I think it's on Thursday. Uh, John White and uh, Dean Swan will walk you through live how to set up a very similar knowledge bot. So if you're interested in setting up something similar for a question and answer type community within your Yammer network, we have a great session for you to be able to do that later on this week. I want to switch back to uh, talking a little bit about the live event scenario. Like I said, when we first um, started thinking about the live event scenario, we did some research with our customers just to understand what some of the needs were in this area. And a lot of what we learned from, especially from our corporate communications friends, is that they really wanted this kind of highly produced, highly manicured, well-produced sort of event where you bring in cameras and you have um, a nice kind of studio produced event. So that's really the scenario that we initially focused on. But we also know that there are different types of video scenarios that might play out within your organization. In fact, we have Cerner here that is going to be presenting tomorrow. Uh, they've been using live events and uh, highly encourage you to join their session as they've been using uh, the various forms of live events. But I mentioned, so the first uh, experience that we focused on is really kind of that external app or a device. So really with uh, those situations where you bring in cameras, maybe using an external encoder like, um, like Wirecast, um, that's the scenario for that first one. The second one is around uh, a Microsoft Teams live event. So when you want to do something a bit more ad hoc, uh, you just want to use your desktop, you want to use your camera, you want to share something, uh, Microsoft Teams live events is great for that. And we have a third scenario, which I'll go into in just a little bit. But the one thing I want to mention is that um, since we've gone live with this experience, we've, uh, we went through a preview time, we learned from a lot of you, and we also wanted to make sure we continue to improve the experience. And one of the things that we heard from a lot of you is if you, started, uh, if you ever started down the path of creating the, even this um, external studio produced type event, you notice that it kind of took you out to Teams. That was a bit of a jarring experience for a lot of folks. So one of the things that we've been improving on is bringing that scheduling experience right into Yammer. So you, don't, you won't require teams for the scheduling experience anymore. You'll be able to create and schedule the entire experience right from within Yammer. So we plan to deliver this within the next few months or so. Um, so we're excited to, to uh, accept your feedback, take your feedback, and really, uh, really try to enhance the experience and make it easier for you. The other piece that we are working on as well that we've gotten feedback from you on is that Teams live event experience, where currently it does broadcast through Teams. Uh, we also got, so we got feedback from many of you that you'd like for that Teams live event experience to also broadcast in Yammer as well. So just know that we're diligently, diligently working with both the stream team and the Teams team to make that happen. No specific time frame on when that will happen, but we are definitely dedicated to making sure that that experience is seamless for you as well. The last experience that I wanted to mention is the um, experience that we heard from a lot of you on wanting to be able to do a broadcast that is a bit more ad hoc in nature. And we'll pray to the demo gods here and see if we can actually get this to work. This is still pretty early work, but we wanted to see if we can give you some insight into this. But um, one of the things that we heard from a lot of you is the ability to do a live video broadcast right from your phone. Uh, just be able to pull your phone out of your pocket and to be able to 
broadcast instantly uh, from your mobile phone from wherever you might be. We've heard um, instances of maybe an executive coming out of a meeting and wanting to be able to uh, you know, just do some top of mind comments or maybe to film uh, a quick safety video. So here you see uh, I'm broadcasting live from my phone. Uh, there's a slight delay just because of the Wi-Fi, but um, hopefully you can see that, um, you know, we, again, we think this is a scenario that uh, a lot of you will be able to use and a lot of you will be able to take advantage of uh, being able to go live from wherever you might be, from a conference, from a shop floor, uh, coming out of a, uh, a meeting. So uh, this is, again, something that we're also working on. Uh, no timeline on when this is going to come, but just know this is something that we think is important and uh, we'll be bringing to you soon. that, I'll bring uh, Jason back up to the stage. All right, so I, I wanted to go back to that uh, slide I showed at the beginning about kind of what we promised at Ignite and, and where we are against that. Um, so uh, Yammer Conversations web part uh, for SharePoint. We just shipped this last week to 100% of our customers. It's out there, it's done, awesome. The Yammer tab and Teams, you saw Steve demo this, we shipped this in February. The question and answers message type, uh, you saw Steve demo that, and we're gonna make that generally available to everybody at the end of June. Um, rich text formatting, we shipped that out to all of our customers last week. Uh, default file storage in SharePoint, uh, this is one that uh, has, has taken us a little longer than, than we had hoped, uh, but it will be shipped out to all of our customers by the end of June. Uh, Yammer live events, yeah. Who do you say all of our customers? No, N we don't have a specific government cloud offering for Yammer, yeah. Um, so uh, Yammer live events, again, that has, uh, we announced that in March, um, uh, with Stream and Teams together, uh, and that is generally available to, to all of our customers. Uh, in geo storage of Yammer messages, I'll talk about that just in a second, uh, and, and, and I'll touch about on e-discovery in just a second too. So, uh, EU data residency. So, a number of our customers have told us, uh, particularly European customers, that it is important for them to be able to store their Yammer conversations uh, and Yammer files in the EU. And I'm very excited to announce today uh, that we have launched NGO storage for Yammer messages and files for all new Office 365 tenants. It's a very exciting moment for our team. So this is one of the, one of the big payoffs that we got from building on Azure. Uh, is that over the last number of months, our team was able to take uh, the Yammer deployment in the United States uh, and essentially make a copy of that deployment uh, for EU customers. And we've been piloting this experience in the EU with customers already uh, for the last two months since, since March. Uh, and we already have 600,000 provisioned paying Office 365 users using Yammer uh, in the EU. So, very exciting moment for us. Um, uh, how this works, the country that you enroll in with Office 365 will then determine whether you get provisioned in Yammer for the United States or you get provisioned in the EU. Uh, for existing customers, there is a support process for those who want to uh, reprovision their network and start over new uh, in the EU. Um, and and uh, in addition to having the messages uh, and, and files stored at rest within the EU, within Yammer, uh, for the connected SharePoint groups uh, where your files are stored, so going back to kind of what Steve was showing before, uh, we will follow the rules of multi-geo storage as those groups get created. So based on who creates them and the rules that you have set up around SharePoint multi-geo, uh, that SharePoint site will get uh, deployed in the right place and that's where those associated files will be stored. Um, the, the, next, uh, the next investment that is really paying off for us based on the, the infrastructure and the architecture work that we've done over the last year is e-discovery for Yammer. 
Uh, so we know that it's very important to our customers that they can discover and search content that's on Yammer. Uh, and we will be doing a small uh, preview for this uh, starting at the end of June with a select set of customers. And Yammer eDiscovery will, will be generally available uh, the second half of this calendar year. Uh, and this is fully integrated with Microsoft uh, 365 Security and Compliance Center. Uh, and when this launches, you'll have eDiscover capabilities uh, and the ability to do legal hold. Um, so uh, again, really just meeting the needs uh, from a compliance standpoint. Uh, this actually is what I showed before. Uh, so let me talk a little bit then about what's actually coming next uh, for Yammer. So where are we investing from here? So if I go back to those pillars that we talked about at the beginning of the talk, uh, in leadership engagement. Well, we know leaders want to connect with their employees in richer and more meaningful ways. So what are we doing? Uh, first, we want to deliver on mobile go-live experiences. So really what, what Steve was demoing there so that uh, you know, uh, leaders and others within an organization can broadcast uh, in a very ad hoc and authentic way. Uh, one of the things that we hear from leaders and comms is that when leaders participate in Yammer, Sometimes their conversations don't really stand out. They can get lost in the noise. So we want to think about how we make those conversations stand out more when they're using Yammer uh, so that those messages get across. You know, in, in corporate communications, uh, we, you know, it's great to have these open, vibrant conversations. Uh, but it's also important at times that those conversations, well, it's important at all times, that those conversations in addition to being open and transparent, uh, are also uh, inclusive and respectful. Uh, and so we do think that there are a set of tools that we need to deliver to corporate communications uh, to enable uh, them, to enable community managers uh, to, help, to help shape a conversation and set the right tone when needed within an organization. So here we're looking at things like uh, if a conversation gets uh, maybe a bit out of hand, uh, the ability for somebody to step in and say, great, thanks everybody for your input, you know, we're going to close this particular thread down. Um, or the ability uh, for someone within the organization to report if they see something that is, uh, you know, completely out of bounds in terms of the activity happening in Yammer. So. Thank you. <laughs> so, so we think this is really uh, an important space for us to invest in as Yammer moves from, uh, you know, being really a early adopter, open conversation tool to, to going really broad across organizations. So you'll see more from us in that space, and you know, would love also to get your input on on what you think is needed there. Um, you know, in the areas of community and knowledge. Um, you know, first of all, you'll see us continue to invest deeper in the SharePoint experiences that Steve showed before. We really think that you know, our SharePoint investment is really about figuring out how to marry the content in SharePoint with the conversations that can happen around that SharePoint, uh, or that can happen around that content. Uh, and so, uh, first of all, we want to expand the, the basic SharePoint web part uh, that we have just shipped so that uh, so that it'll have the new capabilities um, that you see in the core Yammer experience. Uh, someone asked about community sites and Yammer. Uh, so we're working very closely with the SharePoint team. We don't have anything to announce there yet, but working very closely with them in terms of how do we take forward what Yammer has in communities and discussion and what SharePoint has uh, in terms of these sites and how do we bring those closer together. Um, so, uh, so really looking to invest more deeply there. Um, you saw the, the Q&A feature from, uh, from Steve earlier uh, with the ability to, to ask a question and mark a best answer. Uh, but we really see this as a basis of more deeper investments that we want to do in knowledge tracking and knowledge sharing. So besides just mark a best answer, the ability to have upvoting and downvoting on questions and answers in a collaborative way, the ability to use that perhaps to build uh, you know, a reputation score for those participating. Um, so we really see that as, as an area that will continue to go to go deeper in building on that uh, initial Q&A investment. Um, on the Microsoft 365 side, 
so uh, we're continuing to work deeply on Teams integration. So you saw the Teams um, uh, tab, the Yammer tab in Teams. Uh, that's what Steve showed. Uh, but we're looking at deeper ways to integrate, uh, particularly for customers who are really interested in using Teams as a single pane of glass to deliver to some set of their employees. So you saw in this morning's keynote a uh, number of interesting uh, investments on the SharePoint side and how that fits much uh, more strongly into Teams. Uh, and you'll see more investments from us down that direction as well. Um, also, just adopting more of the common Microsoft 365 concepts. So the people card will come to Yammer, uh, the latest version of the Microsoft uh, suite header that carries over all the branding will come to Yammer. Uh, the uh, updated um, Office 365 logos that were actually announced uh, a while ago in November um, are actually on this phone right now. So uh, that'll be coming out pretty soon on, on uh, you'll notice it particularly in mobile. Uh, but again, you'll really see us become more and more and more an integrated part of the suite. Um, last thing I wanted to mention here is something we're working on called M365 native mode. Um, you know, a little bit of history here. Uh, Yammer as a standalone application and acquisition had a number of concepts which were unique within Office 365, you know, from groups to how identity worked to how a lot of the management worked, et cetera. And over time, what we're really working to do is uh, uh, adopt and tie in to the general concepts available in Office 365 to simplify that management and deployment story for Yammer. <coughs> and this is really what Microsoft 365 native mode will be about really, really um, adapting as strongly as we can the suite concepts for groups and, and for uh, identity, et cetera. So there's a talk later this week, uh, I, I think on Thursday afternoon, where we'll talk more about, about what that means. <coughs> and then the investments that we're making in e-discovery and legal hold right now, I think is really the first step with the Microsoft Security and Compliance Center. Um, so next step would be things like information protection, expiration policies, et cetera, uh, that build on that integration um, that we're going to deliver now. Uh, so uh, I, I wanna wrap this up and then allow for uh, questions. I think we've got a little bit of time for questions. Uh, these are kind of the remaining talks that we have throughout the conference, um, going deep in a number of different areas. Uh, I'll call, out, uh, I'll call out a couple here. Um, if you wanna go deeper on live events, on Thursday we've got a session uh, with Kasha, who's actually down there, wave your hand, Kasha, uh, and Michael, uh, oh, Michael's sitting right next to her, on hosting and managing live events in Yammer, so they'll go deeper on how to do that between Yammer and Stream, I think that'll be a great one. Uh, another one I just wanted to call out was, was what I just mentioned was the bottom one, the Yammer Trust and Compliance Deep Dive, really going into the, the e-discovery investments and the, and the Microsoft uh, 365 native mode that I mentioned. Um, but again, I want to thank all of you for choosing to come to this as your, your first session for the SharePoint conference. And, uh, you know, open it up for any questions you have for a few minutes. And I've got some prizes, too. So thank you. <laughs>